Hello, Torchlight fans. Thank you so much for joining us here for our first stream of 2019. We have some amazing things planned for this year. We're super stoked to be here, ready to show off some of the awesome things that we put into the build. A quick round of introductions, and then we'll get right into the meat. So I am Sofetch, community manager here for Perfect World. And this dude, your favorite man in the world, it's Tyler, Extra's project lead on Torchlight Frontiers. How's it going, Tyler? Very How has 2019 been for you and the team so far? It's been great. It, we're very excited to be here. It's been uh, it's been nice to have a little holiday break um, after doing the alphas, but uh, we, the team is already like dove right into making a bunch of new stuff and a bunch of changes. I'm really excited to be able to talk about those today. Excellent, cool. So real quick, if you don't if you don't mind, let's uh, recap what Torchlight Frontiers is all about. Right. So um, this is the next installment of the Torchlight franchise. It's the online version of Torchlight. We're, um, we've announced we're coming out on PC in, in 2019, and we'll be coming out on consoles after that. We, um, we're all the kind of charm and, and fun of smashing monsters and getting cool loot of Torchlight, but in an online game where you see other players and play with other players. Right on, right on. So, I know recently we had a few alphas. We had yes. some closed alpha tests uh, late last year, yes. and we got a small group of players into those. They were closed, invite only, and we've learned a lot from them. It was a great opportunity for us. So, do you mind just talking a little yeah, bit about that? Yeah, let's talk those? about that. So, we had one in November. We had one in early December. The, the goal of these alphas was really for us to get our server infrastructure figured out, making sure that we can handle 10 times as many players as we had seen before when our, with our own tests. And so, um, it really was about like melting the servers. And the first alpha that we, you guys jumped in and played and totally melted those servers in a great way. Um, and we uh, solved some problems and things to fix. And uh, then after Thanksgiving, after a few weeks after that, we went into alpha two. And again, the goal was, okay, did we, did we fix it? Can we sustain and hold all these players playing together? And it worked. We actually, uh, a few days before the test, did have our big fix in for the thing that was broken in Alpha 1. It went in, and we were able to hold it up. In fact, I was even able to get like all the server guys together on Friday afternoon of, the, of Alpha 2 and say, okay, <laughs> it's working. Now, what can we test and try to learn? Like, what levers have we not pulled? What things have we not tried? And they, they did a bunch of cool stuff of like spilling over to the cloud and back and turning servers on and off and piling everybody onto one big server, piling everybody on a small server, all sorts of stuff like that. And although it created some bumps and feel and, and smoothness in the game for a lot of players, it was like a huge amount of great learning for us about just what it takes for our servers to be able to stand up and host an audience. Um, and although we have more work to do in that space, it was, it was huge, huge learning there. But that wasn't really what we're here to talk about today as far as what those alphas came from. We actually got a ton of feedback from, from the audience, uh, from people playing it, when uh, we had those alphas. And so just th the other part of that Friday when we opened up the second alpha is like I sit down and I got my headphones on and I'm in a Discord <laughs> public uh, forum. I'm at watching Discord chat. I'm playing the game and I've got a big spreadsheet open that I'm just <laughs> typing in task after task for our team to do as I listen to and hear all the things people are saying that needs to happen in the game. And then after the alpha is over, we have weeks of going through the thousands of feedback suggestions that people put in in game. We go to the forums and we listen and read all the stuff that happened in the forums. People are still talking about it in Discord like crazy. We put all that together and, um, and filter it through and find the problems and the issues that people want to work on and address, and then we find things to fix. Everything from the stone elemental is a kind of a weak monster to fight. He seems like he should be tough. That fight was lame, and, and, and <laughs> thousands of those little things, to some really big things that we're going to talk about and showcase today. Awesome. That's a perfect segue. And actually, Wasmobot, I think, in chat asked if, if there's a theme to today's uh, stream, and there absolutely is. And Tyler basically hit it on the mark yeah. right there. We've got a lot of great feedback from you guys from the alphas. And again, the alphas were mostly just to kind of test servers, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, we, we want to hear what you guys think. We want to make a wonderful game that everybody can enjoy. And so today on stream, we're going to be showing off some of the things that we got feedback from you and that Ektra and Tyler, t Tyler and Ektra and, and the team yeah. was able to implement into the game. Right. So we're going to go through um, a lot of the big, most of the bigger things that we've done to change. Um, from that feedback and kind of how, how, that, how that worked. So um, the first one, this most obvious one, if you could see, when you see the game screen right now, okay, we'll is go ahead and switch over right switch now. Switch over to show the game. Boom. Um, 
Well, the most obvious things you'll see right off is that the UI actually scales more. And honestly, I'm not even sure. We might even be scaling it even more in more recent builds than this one. Um, and what we're doing there is we're trying to find a compromise between having that layout that works really well from 10 feet away on a TV screen when you're playing on the couch and also being able to take advantage of a high resolution monitor and a big HD view. And so we're shrinking a lot of the things so that they're still re readable and stuff, but that you get more space back for being able just to see the world and stuff. So, um, yes, so the so higher res your monitor, the smaller all that stuff gets. Yeah, we're running on uh, uh, basically 1080p here. We're on 1920 by 1080. So you can visibly see how much more real estate you have on the screen. And I have a 4K monitor at my desk. And it it, it's like, yeah, it gets even smaller and it scales really nice. So, yeah, yeah. it's definitely and, and a that big piece of feedback. That was all in response to a lot of people before we even had the alphas and during the alphas talking about feeling like um, the game feels almost like a mobile game. It feels very console-y and that sort of thing. I don't think we're done trying to answer those concerns, but it's definitely one of those um, things that we're trying to address in a way we're trying to address that is, uh, is adjusting the scale of the UI. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and you'll see that throughout the rest of the stream, too. We'll open up more menus, and you can see how it scales there. Yeah. And yeah. So the next thing, so we actually have two like major features that we want to hit on right. and a bunch of other little stuff. Right. So why don't we just jump into the first one? Yeah, um, so one of the things we heard a lot in Alpha 1, and again, some in Alpha 2, but although I nerfed it so it wasn't as big a deal. Oh, wait, no, you're doing is, Let's is, do this uh, first. Let's do this first. <laughs> is, um, well, one thing we heard, yeah, even when people were theorizing after we announced horizontal content, and said, hey, you're going to have a whole different set of gear for each place you go to. And then we, um, talk, and we were talking about people within the game were, were playing a lot of Goblin and then wanted to go to Hyvid, and there was a lot of frustration and concern there about how to manage their gear for that. And honestly, as I'm playing with my kids at home and we're going from Goblin to Hyvid and they're trying to figure out how to manage all that, um, we decided to, to make a feature around that that not only meets that need for convenience of being able to switch between different sets of gear, but also gives you an opportunity for decoration and storage. So this is what we call a wardrobe. It's a uh, fort prop that you place in the world where you can um, dress it up with your stuff and, um, and show it off as people visit your fort. They can see that cool outfit you have. And, mm -hmm. and you can see as he's changing the stuff on, um, in, in the, on the left side, the wardrobe kit stuff is changing what's on that statue. And in this case, what we're looking at that's storing it all is a stone statue. But we actually could do this with a lot of other kinds of things, too. It could be not only a different statue. We can have bronze and gold and silver and all that. But also, you could dress up a guard. Like, you could have a Dusk Mage guard standing in your town that you could dress up with different things. Um, we could do it with an armor rack of just stuff kind of standing on wood or th things like that that allow us to very easily and quickly swap everything between your character and, and this um, wardrobe so that I can go from, hey, I'm going to play goblins, but my friend said, hey, let's go play Hyvid. I go in my fort, click on that wardrobe thing, and it just swaps it all. This, was a, this is kind of my passion side project from over the uh, holiday break that I kind of brought back as a Christmas present. Yeah, it's pretty um, rad. It functions really well, too, and it's super easy, and it, it's simple to figure out, and I love how it displays the armor set yeah. on the statue, and it's a nice little prop, like a set piece, mm -hmm. and then it's functional and practical, too. It's yeah, wonderful. yeah, and it's also kind of, for now, for where we are in the game, that one of the answers to, hey, I've got these legendaries that I outgrew, what do I do with these things? Like, <laughs> where, where do they go? Well, you can at least dress, you could dress up a really cool mannequin or a, 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 a guard with that stuff, so you can kind of be building, like, that really cool look. So yeah, that's cool. Um, somebody's asking in that in that space. Somebody's asking how many sets we have. We don't. We, uh, I think they're asking two different things there, and I'll try to answer them both. One, we don't currently do um, sets like Diablo three or Torchlight versions of sets where you get extra bonuses for having multiple things that are in a group together. Um, I'm kind of frightened of those because I kind of see where the in-game tuning goes on that. But the uh, but we do have a whole lots of sets of uh, equipment that have different looks for your character. Um, Rip. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Okay. Let's try again. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll get, we'll get then, that spun um, up in just a moment. And then the, uh, <laughs> we have a whole bunch of different sets of looks for your character. It's somewhere around 15 to 20 per um, class and gender of different ways your character can look. And so there's a lot of different ways um, to make your character appear. Right. Oh, that's what I get for oh, cheating. No. See? <laughs> no, no, I'm going to. 
I'm gonna poke the guys at uh, at the office. <laughs> going, hey. All right. So Is while he's doing working? that, uh, you may have seen a little teaser that Tyler put out uh, earlier this week on Discord, and that made it to our Reddit too. Oh, so that was just kind of mentioning. Oh, here we go. We're back up. Are we back up? Yeah. See, that's what I get Excellent. for being a cheater. But let me uh, let me the, talk the about what that. Is. But actually, that's pointing to another cool feature. It's behind the scenes thing, but it's a very cool behind the scenes thing. In that, um, in the last alpha, we went into it the day before, knowing that the Netherlings and the Moss Rats as bosses and legendaries were just deadly little things <laughs> were that crazy. were ridiculously hard. And um, at that time, I'd already just kind of made a little tweak to the data to make that better, but uh, we couldn't make a whole new build and didn't want to release a whole new build to everyone to fix that. Um, and since then, uh, one of our brilliant engineers, uh, Andrew, went through and made this tech that lets us download all, those sh all that data live in your game so that I don't have to make a whole new patch and a whole new build to do something like just tweaking the netherling or the moss rat to do a little less damage. That's something I can do like the day of the alpha being released very quickly um, just to, to tweak the numbers a bit. And that's going to make it so much better and so much nicer in the game to, sh to be able to adjust kind of how it plays and how it feels. So you're telling me that if you wanted to, in the middle of everyone playing and enjoying their time, mm -hmm. you could just scale up all of the monsters and make them completely unbeatable. I could make them and crazy. just have them siege the towns Or and just I could kill just hear everybody. from someone that, hey, that rock elemental is, um, is not working, so we need, to, uh, <laughs> we, we need to make that tougher. All right. Uh, so yeah, just a minute, folks. Sorry about this. A little bit of delay. Trouble. Yeah, we are on a test build. Uh, you'll see a little disclaimer yeah, in the false. bottom corner over here. Um, this is, like we were discussing before the stream started, this is not even an alpha build. This is actually oh, yeah. just a dev build. Yeah. So we just kind of, uh, you know, all, all the developers just throw things in and we're testing stuff. And then we're like, please just don't mess anything up. We're going to try to get in the build and show some cool stuff off. So, yep, this is not a stable this is build not, by not terribly any means. Stable. So <laughs> I mean, this might be a rough ride. We'll see how far yeah. we can get on it. So people keep talking about my T-shirt. I do have a Diablo 2 T-shirt on. I earned that. Rad, when I, was, that's great. I was on the Diablo team, 2 team from one of the first few months that they started working on it, and then um, all the way through ship, and then was the project lead for the expansion pack for Diablo 2. So I sometimes still wear my Diablo gear. Um, anyway, we're trying to get the game back up. There's a couple other things I can still talk about. Um, yeah, and for we sure. I'll have to show in the game. We have a nice list of things. We have a to big show list, so I'm going to so talk about that stuff. So one of the things we heard about a lot in um, both the Alpha 1 and 2 was that when you're um, trying to, when you earn skills and stuff, the way the game works is you have these four objects, like an Arcanum and, a, and, and various stuff for each class that th I almost, I almost mentioned the third player character stuff. Oh, no. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, the, uh, the, it, and, and those objects were where you can unlock different tiers of skills that you can um, use for your character. And in the Alpha, to unlock those buildings, you would use uh, resources that you harvested out in the world or harvest and refined in the refining objects in order to, um, get, to get the things up. So the, um, what, we, but what, what was wrong with that was a few things. Uh, we had some players complaining that, hey, you're forcing me to go around and chop down trees in order to make my character more powerful. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, grant, and I'll grant you that it is, uh, it is part of the game to go do all the harvesting and stuff, but that feels like a side activity. Um, and it doesn't feel like directly related to the, my power of my character. People didn't like how the refining was really that. And also there was just this bad tension between, hey, I've got all these wooden planks and stuff. Um, I'd love to decorate my fort, but I need to save all that stuff to get that cool other skill, so I'm not going to decorate my fort. And that felt awful too. So. Put all that together, and we we just did a shift where now to upgrade your skill objects, the thing like the arcanum and stuff, you would use um, gold and skill points to upgrade it, which are things that you just kind of naturally get by running around playing the game and killing monsters. And so, um, oh goodness, we're still having trouble. Yeah. Um, so this is something that you guys provided a lot of feedback about during the alpha tests. And if you want, you can coming, check out our newest blog. 
So we released a blog on Monday that details some of the changes that we've made and also a brand new system that hopefully we can show off in a little bit. So be sure to visit our website, playtorchlight.com, and check out all of our news there. And so it mentions this brand new progression system and kind of some quotes from you guys, from your alpha testers, who were able to help us kind of target, like hone in on what the major problems were and where the sticking points were for you guys and what you weren't having fun with and what wasn't enjoyable. And so, of course, extra brilliant developers, they were able to kind of take your feedback and determine, like, okay, they, they think this isn't fun, and here are some great examples of what they do think is fun, and then use some of that, and then determine uh, what we think is fun, yeah, yeah. and also use our ideas and be able to, to mesh it all together and create a, a brand new system that is still reminiscent of the old system, but has a, it's basically a new feature altogether. Right, right. So the other, so I'm, I'm getting word that they're, that a whole bunch of servers just disappeared, and now they're bringing them back up, and they're going as fast as they can. So Excellent. hopefully, we'll get the game back up any moment now. Yeah, um, but we are only twenty will, minutes in, so we got a lot of time left. I will work down to kind of the next thing on the list that I think is worth that I could talk about and, sure. and wave my hands in front, <laughs> which is um, the other one. Well, the other big feedbacks that we heard a lot about was how the potion game worked and how the potion in your storage, um, yes. Sofetch did melt the servers all by himself. Look at that. Isn't yep. that amazing? We, That's um, all me, man. <laughs> the, so what we, what we did is um, instead of what was happening to players was they were running out potions very early in the game, um, and then we needed to... Uh, then when they got further in the game, as the, things kind of, the balance and tuning felt different, they ended up with a lot of potions. And then they're starting to just fill their inventory with potions to the point that they're like selling potions and they're worried about, can I carry all the stuff I want to carry because these potions are taking up so much space and all that. So, very much like Torchlight 2 uh, and Torchlight 1, we, we, we have this notion of a, a, a consumables tab that's been added that has all those kind of scrolls and potions and stuff going into it. And so that has been added. And this week, Guy, our lead gameplay engineer, is also adding um, a set of slots that's specifically going to be for potions. So the way it's going to work is you can have a potion equipped that says what kind of potion you're using, because that also has changed, because in previous uh, versions of potions, it was like, well, they're just potions, <laughs> and if you're in Hyvid, it work, they work like this, and, 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 um, and in, the, uh, in the goblin area, it works like that. Instead, you'll see goblin-y red potions dropping in the goblin area, you'll see like some black anti-poison kind of potions dropping in Hyvid, and you get to pick which ones you're using. That's rad. Uh, that's cool. And the other, so you equip it. You actually say, these are the potions I'm using by equipping it. And then you'll get three more slots to carry all your other potions. And that's it. That's the cap of how many potions you have. Right now, we're putting five per stack, and you can have a max of 20 potions being carried, period. And then, and then you can go into fight and know that's kind of the maximum you can carry of those styles of potions. We're talking about and working on also having other kinds of potions, some potions that have bigger stacks, some potions that have less stacks, smaller stacks, so that we can um, vary that and make that kind of a cool thing about its type of potion is that its stack size is different. But it, we've com fully compartmentalized the potion thing into its own bucket. Um, uh, and you can still put them in your, your um, account stash. You, you know, we'll let you put them there, but you can't carry them anywhere else but these, the, these particular spots. So that frees up a lot of space so that you can right. have other armor sets, and it's not like uh, bogging down the rest of your inventory. Right. It's a lot easier to manage, cause, so you always know where your potions are going to be. They aren't in the middle somewhere. They aren't at the bottom. And there's and also just a very clear limit so that you're not worried about, well, can I pick up that potion? Should I pick up that <laughs> potion? There'll be a point where, like, no, you can't pick up that potion. You are full. And that's, and that's fine. That's just how, that's how the game now works. Yeah. Um, and we saw a little bit of that, too, when we were in the game. It's part of the new interface, so it's right there below all the items. And we'll show that, too. It looks like it's uh, we're hopefully getting back in in just like a moment. It looks like we're starting to get back yeah, in. we're loading in the character. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we've got select. more of that potion stuff. We've got a lot more potion stuff coming. But um, but that is a lot of what we heard was that, you know, the, I don't like the stacks of potions. I, I don't like the, how it's limited and all that. So we're now... Um, Oh, we're going to try again. Yep. Um, <laughs> so it's that one. So I'll talk about that. The uh, Another feature that made it in just after the build that we're looking at was, um, was it sounds like a small thing, but it really brought a lot of feedback and rage uh, from a lot of players, which is that people were accidentally deleting items in their inventory, and they'd just be gone. Like, poof, there you go, item's gone. I hit D, and my mouse is in the wrong place, and now it's gone. Or I was using my controller, and I hit X when I was on the, uh, in the thing, and suddenly the item's gone. 
Um, it was, and yeah, very frustrating, awful thing. So, uh, small change, but it's still a significant one is that we have a confirmation dialog that comes up and says, do you really want to delete this thing? And you have to yeah. hit a different button to say <laughs> yes. And then, um, and that'll hopefully, at least for now, uh, stop all that awfulness. Excellent. And of course, that was a big piece of feedback we got from you guys, too. Very you know, frequent. it's easy to make that mistake on accident, or you're just pressing buttons. What does this one do? And then, oh, shit, I it just got rid of the legendary. Something. Yeah, that's definitely one of the ones <laughs> that came from the feedback. I hit the feedback button kind of um, place where we were hearing things. Uh, there was thousands of messages that came through there, such that our QA team had to spend a couple days going through categorizing uh, summarizing and pulling some of the best ones out so that I could have any idea what was being said amongst those thousands of things. Um, another one that's in that category that we got thousands of people talking about was the mini-map. So um, up in the top right corner, there's a map that's showing you kind of what's going on right around you. And there's a little story around that, which is that our game actually had the camera zoomed in closer to the player for a couple years of, us, of development. And, um, and then we found uh, one, of our, one of our developers was like, doesn't it look so much more amazing if we zoom this out? And so we did. We zoomed the game out, but we didn't change the mini-map. And so it was actually this horrible state in the alpha where literally you could see more on the screen than you could have seen in the mini-map as to what, <laughs> where to go. It was like not guiding you at all. So that's been changed. Uh, you can see right now that there are some more like dark gray um, green triangles there, and you have some bright green triangles. Okay, so um, admittedly, we have a new UI artist coming in who's going to replace those green triangles with something good, as opposed to my placeholder-y thing. But, that looks fine. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, um, those are showing off a couple things. One, each of those little icons is showing you where Harvest Node is. Um, we may not have them on all the time like that. We've talked about some cool things we could do with pets to make those things appear, or other stuff. But at least for today, we've turned it on where like it will tell you where to go get the next harvestable node, which is is telling right you, here. Like, Look right at here that. Is is where the stone thing. So that's convenient. Also, the fact that they're kind of gray on the edge there is showing you that they're off the edge of the mini map, and you can more clearly tell the stuff that's on the edge and not on the edge, and that sort of thing. So we're trying yeah. to trying to do a lot to make this a more useful tool and um, something that actually you want to look at and use. Um, we have more to do there, but that's certainly some, some improvements from what was definitely the most overwhelmingly focused on topic amongst those feedback button things was the mini-map and the how do you interact with it. So cool. um, we are taking steps to make that better and better. I just don't want to get bopped, but real quick, uh, since we mentioned it, so here's a new consumable slot, and then we can go ahead and click over here and see this. And right now they're all mixed together. It's not got yeah. the three slots yet I'm in the consumable, <laughs> but we will get that, and we'll get a new icon for the uh, consumable tab. We'll get all, yeah. all that will get better. Of but, course, uh, work in progress. Yep. It's all in progress. This is still a dev build, not even an alpha build. It's yes. even further back from an alpha yes, build. Yes, it's not it? even fully an alpha <laughs> build yet. Build. Um, <laughs> so that's another big thing that we changed and worked on. Um, cool. Another story that I heard a lot was uh, people talking about getting how the how frustrating it was kind of getting around in the world. What would happen would be they'd like either get ahead of their quest line and then have to come back, and they'd already bound a waypoint that was so far ahead, or things like that. Um, um, and then there's and then they had the other challenge of like I wanted to go from playing against the goblins to hive it, and then when I went back to the goblins, like how did I go back? so far into the game where I was. Um, and this is all because our original system for how waypoints worked was a lot like what you saw in WoW and in EverQuest and a lot of other online games where the world feels really big because you are only bound to one place and you can't just hop around anywhere you want to be. That You actually had to run there. And that's the kind of idea we had on paper was we'd like people to feel like this is a big world that they have to travel to the places they want to go. Mm -hmm. and. It turns out that was bad. <laughs> um, and so we heard that through all that feedback and stuff. So you're no yeah, longer. Yeah, we heard that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. So you no longer bind to a waypoint. It is much more like the traditional action RPG style that you saw in Diablo 2 and in Diablo 3 and that you saw in Torchlight of um, you click on waypoints that you haven't been to and then you unlock them and then you can go to any of the waypoints that character has unlocked. Uh, whenever you want, um, from town or from a waypoint thing. So that is now the big, big change that we've made. 
Right on. So I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I do think that there is a very special mechanic that we did, uh, th that we were referencing earlier, and we talked about it in our blog on Monday. Yeah. But yeah, we have a new kind of gear progression system. Oh yes. For each frontier, and you can see it right here at the bottom. Yes. Where there's a, a yeah, a we progress bar, an XP bar. things like there was a bar down there for your relic weapon leveling up, and we just switched it to now being your character leveling up. So that is that is a really big change. Um, yeah. We had come out initially saying, hey, we don't have character levels. We, we have this horizontal progression that doesn't do levels and all that. Um, and that was cool. It had some cool aspects to it. But a lot of what we heard, oh, man, you're just freezing shattering. That is awesome. It's great. Yeah, I love um, the freeze weapons. <laughs> I love the cold, the cold stuff back in the game to really being fun. So the big change there is... Um, we heard a lot of frustrations from players saying, I don't like having to go back to my fort to be able to use some gear that I've gotten. I don't like having to use some skill points because we had the system where you had to use skill points to buy goblin armor skills or to buy goblin weapon skills in order to uh, level up and get a higher level of goblin armor, a higher level of goblin weapons that you could equip. Um, and... Boy, this just did not go over well. Yeah. Uh, we, had, we were nervous about it ourselves. We thought there could be problems with it. Uh oh, don't worry, they don't hit as hard as the alpha anymore. All right, excellent. Yeah, they still <laughs> hit, but not as hard as the alpha. Um, and so they, we still have um, items with item levels and stuff. But what we've changed to that whole system, we rethought the whole thing. Is now you level up in the Goblin Frontier. So that's why there's a little goblin icon down there with a yep. level bar. And you can see the progress bar moving when I'm killing and, and stuff. As he's killing stuff, that bar is getting filled up. And then when you level up there, you can carry higher level gear there. So he can now carry, right now he can carry up to level 5 goblin gear. Yep. Um, Which I think is what I've got equipped anyway. And you yeah. can see in the top left corner there, us showing what level he is for Goblin, and then what level he is for Hyvid, and what level he is for the other thing. No, and, that's nothing. Don't worry about then, that. And um, then... With my horrible placeholder UI <laughs> that, oh, I can't wait till our UI comes and fixes that so I don't make it look bad. But nonetheless, uh, that is a major big change. So you now have level up moments, and uh, you now have uh, a way that out in the field that you get better and able to carry more stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it does seem to scale, too. When I was playing, uh, I actually leveled this manually. Uh -huh. So at level one, I just killed like a dozen things, and then I was already level two. And then yeah. now you can see that it's scaling. So it's taking me much longer oh, to yeah. progress. Oh, yeah. Well, we're doing the traditional thing with any mm -hmm. RPG or any action RPG is that, oh, oh no, it looks like server's down. I think yep. the server might be down. Well, um, yep, okay. server's down. <laughs> the, um, the, we're doing the traditional thing that, like, you know, kill a couple monsters and you give you level two. Just, like, right off the bat. Let's get you leveling up. Um, and so it kind of ramps up. But it does pretty much flatten out after, uh, pretty early and kind of a regular um, pace of progress at a certain point. Uh, and so we're... Um, and so, I, and I think that's pretty exciting. The other thing that changed in that space, without giving up too much away of the other stuff in that, is we actually now have a different um, way that players and monsters are balanced. And when you level up, you actually gain additional health. Uh, and so that also is a way that we've been able to change the difficulty as you level up. Is that um, is that your health goes up with each level, so you'll be tougher in, a, a, as you go up. Nice. So it really feels like a standard uh, RPG, ARPG kind of style, where you do level up, right. but we still have the horizontal progression right. aspect in there, right. where you can see at the top, right, each zone is based on a level, uh -huh. and you'll be getting item drops that are relative to your level and right. to the, the level monster, of the, 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 the monster levels. Yeah. yeah, the other thing about it, just like the other kind of parts of our horizontal progression and the way we play with levels is we also bring your level down to a cap when you're um, visiting too in the sense that your health for instance it gets adjusted so if i have like a level 20 character coming back to this level 5 area i don't have level 20 health i have probably level 7 health which is still beefy and strong and makes you a powerful thing here but you're not like godly you know you, you actually have some combat to do so that's cool yeah uh, another thing to mention on that note, too, is I saw a lot of questions on social media about where the uh, relic weapon progress bar is going to be. And so okay. it is attached to the tooltip now. It is. So you can still see that. You still level up your relic weapon. You can see this one's pretty right. much leveling with me. 
Um, but it, it's but a little bit higher. But as you can tell, me, just generally, when you look at our UI and how we do things, we try to go a, a little bit minimal. We don't want to have mm -hmm. like tons of progress bars everywhere. We don't have a bar for each of the frontiers. And we don't have a, and your relic weapon and all that all in the HUD. We're trying to like pick and choose the things you really need to see. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah, all the pertinent information is on screen. Uh, whenever you're getting close to like your next unlock for your relic weapon, you just go over here and you can see like, okay, cool, we hit five already. And then at eight is when we can expect the next one. And you still get the prompts and the pop ups mm -hmm. and the little flourish uh, when you level so up your relics. So there's one more thing that keeps showing up as we show the inventory. It's not on our list, but I do think it's the thing we talked about saying. Oh, sure. Which is the, uh, sure so when you open here. the inventory, <laughs> on the left side, you see all these programmer art icons uh, with a paw. Uh, that is also a new thing that's come in the game. Um, which is pet inventory. So we did add collars and tags for you to equip on your pets. Um, they are part of kind of what your character has is carrying. So the kind of the, the getting into the nitty gritty of how that works is actually that your character is carrying those things for the pet. And if um, if for one way or another you were either switching where you want to play or stuff, we could we could switch. We could even put those collars and tags into the wardrobe objects and make it part of the loadout that you switch if we so desire. Yeah. So if so. you want to see more about that feature, you can definitely tune into our next stream yeah, or we'll see the more one stuff. after that. Yeah. The, when the the feature's a little bit further along, yeah. we'll be able to show off a lot more about that. Yeah. We have more coming. Yeah. Um, like we we've got some more streams planned for next month. So while we do have a lot of cool stuff to show now, like you're definitely want to going to want to tune in for our we, next yeah, stream and our next stream, and then yeah, we're, we have lots even of great stuff, stuff we're holding back here. Yeah, so, there's lots of uh, stuff we're holding back right so now. So the <laughs> um, but what we are holding back that he's got here, he's playing is we went and added a couple new skills for every class in December. Yes, I've been and waiting so, for us to mention so, this. So I can um, show you guys. <laughs> and, and the philosophy behind that was not only hey, do we need to have a good selection of skills, active skills for players to pick between, but it's also um, important that there's a good balance of those skills that kind of cover all the things that each character is about. And so the skills we added for the Dusk Mage were really all about um, getting some dark um, skills. So there's a, there's a bunch of light skills that we already had in the game. Everything from Holy Bolt to that, um, like, uh, uh, what it was, I forget what that one is with the spray that you're doing. Um, a holy char uh, Charge, Absolution. Absolution, yeah. yeah. Uh, to absolver. like a, a absolver, luminous to holy run. fury, and just we had just tons of, of light skills, uh, but we did not have what we didn't have was um, enough of the dark skills. So we added two new dark damage skills for the dust mage. One of them is Perfect. here. You show Check me it one out. Of them? All right. So this one I think is called Spirit Well, right? Yeah. yeah here we go. Boom! Well. Look at this. So that is where he makes this little dark portal where all these netherlings pop out and start fighting uh, the baddies. For a little while. <laughs> that's so And then rad, they go away. Dude, it's so cool. And so that, that's that's a really fun one. It's got a kind of a long cooldown and it costs an exceptional amount of mana, yeah, but yeah. it spawns pets for you that will tank and they'll absorb hits and they they just go wild. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome. It's it, it, it's really in the middle of what I'm hoping for with the dark skills <laughs> where it's indirect, it's not as controlled, it's not like I could say kill that one guy right now. But it's still powerful and does a great job against a whole bunch of monsters at once. They're procking effects for my weapon too. They're, yeah, they're they'll proc your weapon. Amazing. Your weapon and damage <laughs> so affects their stuff. So if you've got cold going, they've got cold going. Sweet. Um, and then the other one, I always forget the name of this. Uh, temporary artwork, of course. Energy, Energy spike. spike. So we don't have the icon for it, but he's got here. It's called Energy Spike, and it again is a little chaotic, uh, but it does a wave of um, spikes coming up out of the ground. Doing that kind of area damage that we would that you expect out of the, uh, <laughs> the dark spells. So this thing is so sick. I love this skill. It pushes them back. It procs your weapon effects. Yeah. It, oh, it's, a, it's it's incredible and it's so satisfying to use. And also, uh, we got a lot of requests for me to play on controller. So here we go. Yeah. An officially sanctioned uh, Xbox 360 controller. Here you can see it's functioning. It replaces the icons. On, yep. Oh yeah, on the, the icon interface changes. Too, so anytime so you, you change, to, you can live change the controller and back uh, pretty easily. There's only a few features that don't support controller today, but we're, we're always updating that and improving that. In fact, yep. that's what I was literally working on day four yesterday. Well, um, yeah, so, so yeah, cool stuff. So that's some new skills? skills for the Dust Mage. Let's, let's switch over to the um, to the Forged. Absolutely. And we'll and we got uh, some show cool off stuff some new stuff to the Forged. So the Forged also has gotten a ton of love outside of new skills. So we're going to show off the new skills that he has, but there's also a, a lot of things we learned about the Forge through the alphas and people's feedback on it. Um, and we aren't done. We still have more to do to make the Forge a better class. Because by far and away, people seem to like and identify with the Dusk Mage, understand, hey, this is a blaster, I can play that, that's cool. 
uh, the forged as a robot uh, didn't have quite as much play. So, um, so we're doing some stuff to make it better. Uh, one of the things that was key that we heard a lot about was um, there on with the heat mechanic. You build up a bunch of heat, and then you have these vent skills that like use up the heat to be able to um, to like do more damage, do other cool things. And the one that you start with, Vortex Bomb, is one that's this big area effect thing where it sucks in all the monsters and does this big explosion and super powerful. But in the alpha, it took too long. And players complained, and it was true, that like a boss monster could get two full hits in on you um, while that thing is going. And you just got to the point where you were like, I will just vent my heat in the corner <laughs> away from everyone else so that you don't get hurt. And so uh, we... So we, uh, we so we got rid of that, and, and it's now much faster. Uh, th so we still have that skill, still a good skill, but it happens really fast. Yeah, and, and we'll be able to demo um, that. It's pretty awesome. And you should be able to not feel as worried about being hurt from it. Um, so that's cool. So yeah. before we get into the rest of the skills, yeah, and I'll show those in just a bit. Can we talk about this new zone? Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm really We're in excited a new place. to keep going. So <laughs> this is the Hive it Colony. This so and we. In Alpha 2 and Alpha 1, we had the Hyvid. You could go play there, but we really took you from this nice um, human town that we've reclaimed back to the middle of an, almost an alien planet covered in bugs and stuff, which actually is the middle of the Hyvid frontier. This is the new beginning of the Hyvid frontier, which is this uh, military encampment that has been taken over by the bugs. And so you're seeing a lot of like tents and stuff like that. And, and the trees and stuff, and the insects running around. And this is the new way that you'll start out playing against the Hyvid with, um, with some of the gross stuff around and, and it's sprinkled around, but it's mostly uh, still kind of the feeling of Wood's Edge in many ways. Um, and so, so one of our new areas, we have a couple of these new areas for this. It's our new way of um, doing that frontier. Uh, the team is, a lot of the team is really focused right now on getting the Hyvid frontier fully fleshed out all the way to the end with a really awesome end area that we're working on. Uh, but this is the new beginning area that we've got to play and show off. Yeah, it looks great. You can see in the top right, of course, it's a level one to two. So this is the introductory zone to the yeah. frontier. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, we're still working on the quest. We're still Boom. trying to get it all better. But now you've got a new way to introduce it and play against the bug. So back to the forged. So the forged has yes. um, both a ranged and melee set of capabilities. So he's carrying around a weapon and a shield as well as having the hat that pops open and can shoot stuff. Yep. And so um, previously in Alpha 2 we had rapid fire and shotgun blast and the poison dart and the coal launch like a whole bunch of cool stuff you could do with that cannon but really only like the cyclone spinny attack and the charge attack for melee which is really not enough of a complement of really bread and butter skills for doing melee. So we added two new melee skills for the Forged. I am uh, so ready to show we these. Wanted, <laughs> we wanted these to be in the style of the Forged, the feel of the Forged, and work with any weapon. And so um, when, with given that challenge, the uh, art team kind of came up with this punchy, punchy stuff going on. So, so the first one is called Rapid Strikes. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so punch now robot, this, I love this. <laughs> so this is a super punchy robot <laughs> thing. <laughs> that uh, that does uh, a whole bunch of uh, separate damages and stuff, and like in a cone, like does a bunch of damage right in front of you. So, um, Dude, that's, so sick. that I should be it. your new kind of right click to replace the uh, rapid fire, as if you're going to go with the melee version of forged. Um, it's so satisfying. It's so yeah, much fun to use. Dude, e I love somebody's it. Somebody's like E Honda. Yes, yeah. I, yeah, I think there is. Probably some inspiration from some other rapid martial arts kicking kind of moves. There, it's pretty cool. Um, but the one punch forge. Now you're right. Someone is even guessing what the other one is. Well, while we have an area effect forge thing, now we have a single target forge punch. So we now have a way <laughs> to get up toe to toe with that boss guy and just punch, punch, punch it. Um, and this one's called servo driven uppercut. Servo driven uppercut. So oh, it's this big vent. boom that again <sighs> uses a, a, um, a whatever weapon you're carrying for damage and just does a big pound of, of uh, damage all at once. And it looks like it's not using enough heat for my taste. I'm going to put more heat on that. Oh, I, I have the, the auto vent uh, passive, too. Oh, you've yeah, got so a, it's draining cool. it a lot. Yeah. you got a thing that drains it. Yeah, that is, we have a passive that helps drain uh, heat, but the other thing we added in general is the heat is draining much more quickly now. Um, one of the things that felt bad about the forge before was I would 
build up heat, and then I'd open up my inventory and do some things, and then I'd go and get ready to fight the next place. I'm still sitting on a ton of heat, even though I've been, I like, kind of thought I was done and not really going from fight to fight, but took a break, and I still was sitting on a ton of heat. So now the heat uh, drains a lot faster. Not ridiculously fast. You can still carry it from one fight to the next fight, but you can't, like, uh, uh, you know, grab a sandwich and then and still, have, and still have some heat. So that's that's been changed too. Yeah, and especially um, since you can release the heat much quicker now. Yeah, uh, it it feels like the system is definitely coming along in the right, right direction. So it, it, you can keep moving mm -hmm. and you can build and execute and build and execute much more smoothly now. Yeah, it, it feels a lot more. We still have high. some work to do to make him a little more tanky, and we have some ideas there that we haven't done as far as making you tough if you do melee. But um, those things will come. And we will and we will add those things. Okay, Sweet. I think I think that's the whole list of things we wanted to show off. Uh, I think uh, mini map. Do we want to show the the world map too? No, or? I'm gonna okay. hold off on the world map. The world map's Ooh. gotten some love, <laughs> but the um, but not all the love is apparent there, and it needs new artwork and stuff. So I think I th until we have that like all put together. Um, I'm not going to show it yet. It, it, yeah. I want to I make sure the artists have a chance to make it great. Cool. Be sure to tune in next time, guys. we got a lot of cool stuff coming. <laughs> okay. So other so trying to look at some of the questions that have been coming in. Um, let me see. Yeah, we um, can kind of move on to the Q&A portion of so the So people uh, are asking a lot stream. about another class and uh, how many classes we're going to have. We've only announced these two classes, uh, but I do agree that it is not a complete game with two classes. Mm -hmm. um, and... So, and, and, and we've had some great discussions here about, in fact, that the game itself um, doesn't feel as whole and complete with just two classes. So my, my hope would be that we could share the other class and um, really make a big punch of an announcement when that happens. But that's not today. Yeah. Um, that's not today. We're not talking about it today. Uh, the, but the, the thing, I will say that the, the other class that we will announce has been coming along nicely. There's some cool new stuff that we even added to in December. It's, I've been playing it pretty much exclusively lately to make sure it's up to, up to speed and ready I've to play. I've been playing a lot, too. It's, it's a great <laughs> class. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, will this be on PC? Yes, it's a PC game. Uh, it's not what we develop on. That's really a plan to be our first uh, release platform. People are asking about Switch. People love to ask about Switch. Like, people work love to ask about Switch. We haven't got it working on the Switch yet. We don't know yet. Um, Switch is a very different piece of hardware than the other consoles. So we're just hoping it can draw and work. But yeah. we're not quite there yet. I think that's a good time to bring up uh, some of our social media questions. So we did kind of pull you guys and ask what kind of questions you wanted uh, to get answered here on stream. Uh -huh. So we did have one on Twitter that I think that's a good segue to from Fa uh, Falarin asks, when are we hoping to release on Xbox? Right. So we are going to be doing PC first. The PC first. Um, there's still, we're working actively on getting the consoles working. Uh, I saw the game running on the Xbox just this last week. We got running again, and it looks, it looks, I would say better than PC already. <laughs> I've been hearing um, that. It man. looks really good. Um, and uh, but yeah. as to when that is, I, I can't really say it. It'll mm. come after PC, but there's still a lot of talking to, with the uh, different uh, public, the different console owners, and us figuring out when the PC game launches. That I can't really commit. But it will be. Yep. We're working on it. We've been doing. He's playing a controller now. Like the game is made for the controller, and we have a couple engineers dedicated to getting the console stuff going. Yep. So you can already see that the progress is being done, and it, it's in the works. So people are asking about when the next uh, alpha test will be. It's a great and relevant question. We're not going to focus too much about on discussing the next alpha test, other than to say um, it's still many weeks away. Um, we uh, to kind of give you a background, of what's going on at Extra is that we. Had those tests in December. We did some stuff over the holidays and the holiday thing. And now in January, we have kind of our last big breath of like, let's just make a bunch of stuff in January. <laughs> um, and so we have new features and new content and things coming out of that that we're showing now and we'll keep announcing as more of that rolls out. And it won't be until after that that we start to like clean up and prepare to go back into that testing in live mode. Yep. And so, um, so it's still a ways off, uh, and I'm not. We're not ready to announce that date yet, but um, but uh, don't be like on pins and needles as happening tomorrow. However, uh, the way you get into those tests is you need to go sign up on our website. So we still need those signups. It definitely helps for you to sign up even early, so we understand how many people are ready to play and how we can organize and orchestrate our tests. So uh, go ahead and, and sign up for the test to be ready. Yeah, for sure. So just to reiterate, um, be ready for another test in the next few months, and if you haven't already, hit up. PlayTorchlight.com, sign up there, 
and we'll be reaching out to everybody once we're ready. And we cannot wait to announce our next test. Yeah, we want to talk about we the next test. Really we, cool stuff. We, it's so hard to hold back all of these. Yeah. Things. <laughs> um, you don't need to sign up again if you already signed up. If you've been in a previous test, you're automatically in all the tests going forward, as far as I know. Uh, I don't think we have any scenario where people are kind of kicked out of the pool that I've heard of. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think there's plans to do that. Um, the uh, there is. I think a pretty high likelihood that we will reset the characters and forts and stuff for players um, just because we have made so many changes with like how the skills advance and how your characters advance and not having the item equipped skills and a retuning of everything. Like the, I, I'm, I'm strongly tempted for gameplay and feedback reasons to kind of say we're going to do a, a, a character wipe. But it's still not official or final yet. Mm -hmm. um, do we plan on adding questions? People are still asking about as, uh, how we add classes and then, you know, how many classes and all that classes stuff. Uh, so of the things we do when we make the game, there are two things that are massive projects for us. One is making a frontier. Like the Hive and Frontier here, you can see there are new monsters, there's new environments, there's a whole set of quests, there's a whole bunch of armor we make that's specific for it. It is a massive project to make a frontier. The other massive project we have is making a character class. Those things don't just kind of like add water and we have a character. Like, hey, every, hey, I had an idea this morning. Let's have a character. It's actually uh, many months of projects with lots of costumes, lots of skills, lots of playing to make it all come together. Um, those don't just happen. So, but we, nevertheless, we are working on character classes. We are working on trying to add things, uh, add them to the game. But I can't commit to like a pace or a frequency or when how many will show up. Um, but I will say that there's, I could definitely say with confidence, there's a third one that is in good shape that we would love for people to be playing. We just haven't <laughs> not really announced it yet. Um, any other questions? Let's see. People offering all sorts of bribery for keys. That's not how that works, turns out. Um, so people asking about guild systems and achievements. We have not been working on that much. We have other meta things we've been working on, but not those. Um, is this? Oh, uh, will the Dust Mage be able to wear two-handed axes, swords, and maces? Oh, yeah, yeah, great yeah, question. Yeah. So totally. right now, for almost all of our weapons are shared across all the classes. There are only a few exceptions. So um, the short answer is yes, the Dust Mage can carry a bunch of two-handed stuff. Um, it could, they could carry staves, great, uh, great swords are the main ones right now that are two-handed, I think, that we've got. But the... Um, they cannot carry uh, the other two-handed weapons that we have that might be like specific to character classes. The the forge has um, its specific thing, which is a cannon, a chest cannon, and the uh, the dust mage has those really specific like claw, like digitus things that replace the entire part of their arm, which we're not going to be putting on a forge, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we have some exceptions that are off of the sides that say we don't share, but most of them, most thing, most weapons are shareable across classes. Yeah, there's like class exclusive weapons, but then most like the base ones, swords, maces, etc. Yeah. All that stuff is shared between them. Um, uh, punch any, robot. Yeah, get him. Any other? I'm looking for questions here that I can help answer. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys have questions about any of the horizontal progression, the new progression system, yeah. uh, some of the new skills we have for the classes, so, anything about the wardrobe, so definitely throw reason, those our way. Yeah, any reason to progress in different frontiers? There's not a lot of direct interconnection between the frontiers. They really are designed to be separate experiences with their own set of rewards and kind of feel for what you could do. Um, we are adding more, we're adding other systems that'll be more on the account like level of like just rewards for playing the game. And that could be whether whatever frontier you want to play in. But so far we have not added a like immediately play here and there other than one exception is the uh, relics. When you're crafting relics, one part of crafting that relic is getting a relic core, an ember core that comes from a specific boss monster as a drop. A drop that's like 1 out of 10, 1 out of 12 chance. Not like a, I need to grind this for months kind of thing, but also not every time you fight the boss you're going to get it. Um, and because of that, if you want a specific relic, it could be that that boss is in a frontier you haven't played yet. So you need to go over there and play that. So that'll, that'll be happening. I see a lot of questions about Endgame. So yes. we were talking about this before the stream, and of course there are plans for Endgame, yes. but I don't know if we're ready to reveal any details about that just yet. Yes, we are in the middle of a couple projects that kind of come together to our answer to what is the Endgame on many fronts. Um, 
the the in game to me means a few things. It means like why do I keep playing after I've kind of played a lot of the story and stuff? And it also means why do I keep coming back and playing this game? Mm -hmm. We have answers to those things that we're actively doing. It's a lot of what the January effort is about. But I want to wait till all of those things are presentable and together and something I can show you in the game as a package so you could be like, okay, I get it. But, um, but I can't really put that out there yet until I feel like it's on screen, something you can play. Yeah. Uh, real um, quick, release still happening in 2019. Yes, release on PC will still be happening in 2019. And we'll be having some more tests uh, at a future date mm -hmm. uh, within the next few months that will also be on PC. Um, right. Yeah, I think so make sure you sign up with your ARC account on playtorchlight.com. Yep. Uh, the, yes, you still are planning on releasing this year. Uh, as with any developer, we always want more time and we'll try to find <laughs> ways to get time. But uh, so far, it's definitely okay. And the game is, is really starting to come together, starting to feel good. Absolutely. Um, we haven't even started the real polish effort yet. There's only a few of us focusing on polish at the moment. Um, the, you'll see a lot more small changes as we get more and more in polish. I love punching things, man. Um, this is so much fun. Somebody's asking again about relic weapons and frontiers. I can answer that one. Um, basically, just like every other item in the game, relic weapons are associated with a frontier. And so each relic weapon has its level, and it is part of a frontier, just like each piece of armor and everything else. And so uh, this relic weapon, Flash Freeze, is part of the... Um, Goblin Frontier, mm -hmm. and he's cheated up to level there. 30. Yeah, he's cheated up to level 30 because <laughs> he's a cheater. But nonetheless, um, it, uh, it is part, yeah, the, you, you have to, and when you craft a relic weapon, you can decide which frontier that crafted weapon is for. So, yeah. Um, so you, get, you, get to, you get to pick. Um, so, how fast is the progression? It's a good question. Kind of like how fast do you expect players to kind of level up and get through different pieces of content? Um, we have targets and ideas for this that we're still kind of working through and as, as um, players go. Early on, you're going to hit levels pretty quickly. Like, you, you know, level one, level two, level three, that sort of thing is, that's just not even really part of the main game, right? That's just kind of great first impression. Um, as you level beyond that, we're, we're, I think we're aiming somewhere between an hour and three hours per level. Um, one thing we really noticed in the alpha is just that there's players that move at different speeds and play at different speeds. And so anytime I talk about how long something should take, um, take with a big grain of salt because there are those speedster, really fast players, and then there's people who are more casually sitting back and just kind of having fun, and they move at different speeds, very different speeds. And so, um, so we'll see. Yeah, and of course, that's something we want to hear from you guys, too. Once you get your hands on the next build, yeah. then we want to know what you think about the progression system and, and everything in the game. Man. So somebody's yeah, asking sweet. about if we're going to add legendary items that do cool things like changing how the spells work and stuff like that. Uh, we definitely need to do more work on legendary items. Anthony was just talking to me yesterday going, well, you got to give us more time to work on that as designers and really make some cool <laughs> legendary items. And I totally agree. Um, we have the capabilities now and have a regular items dropping with ways to enhance skills. Um, in fact, I believe every skill, maybe not the new skills, I'll have to double check, but I believe every skill has an affix that shows up on items that impacts and improves it. We didn't just do a blanket, hey, every, every skill has a damage boost that you can get. Instead, it's, it's pretty specific. We looked at each skill and went, what is the thing that we want armor and items to affect on this skill? So that, it, so that it makes it uh, more fun to play that skill. So, um, so it's for some things on the forge that might decrease how much heat uh, that skill costs, it might increase how it decrease the cooldown on the skill, it might change the damage, that sort of thing. All that's there. That is ideally part of your strategy as a character is gathering armor and items that affect your skill strategy as well. Oh, I just want to punch this guy. Um, yeah, stun him. Uh, people are asking about max level stuff. I'm going to push that to the side. We'll talk about that uh -huh. another time. Um, what about skills? Will we be able to modify them to the end of the game? Uh, or, or, or we just get... Uh, so the way right now skills work is that the active skill, you just kind of unlock right now and just get level one so you can equip and use that active skill. Um, but the pat but we have for... We're starting to add and have added some passive skills that kind of pair with that active skill mm -hmm. so that you can do things like um, like right now the uh, spin to win thing for um, what do I think we call it? Cyclone yeah. for uh, the forge really starts out as an escape skill 
It's like a good way to get out of the pack and move a little bit, but it is not very effective in killing monsters. It lets you move through the mobs, so if you're surrounded, Seriously. then you can just kind of get out and do it, a little bit of damage. And that does help. It's a nice escape. Mm -hmm. But you, if you pair it with enhanced servos, the passive skill, that passive with that active will, that passive skill decreases, um, changes the heat cost and increases the damage dramatically, as more, especially the more points you put into it, so that that pairing together is you kind of customizing that active skill. If we make enough of those passives, we could come back and do another one and make another um, passive for Cyclone that makes lets you change it in yet another way. But we just gotta get through making all those things and making sure you have enough of these choices and options to put together. Will the Forged have customization for his legs, or will he keep, skip, um, th th keep on the skipping leg? One of the things I love, so here, here, the question someone's asking is, what are we doing with locomotion on the Forged? Is he going to keep being a crab all the time? And one of the things I love about the Forged is the answer is, is that, yes, you can change the legs, and we have already in the game, I believe in the Alpha, that just probably no one found them, uh, yeah. <laughs> another set of legs, which is like a snake tail, that he could go slithering around on. And we have a whole bunch of other ones too that can really change the way that the Forge moves and feels in the game. Um, I'm pushing forward and trying to get more, even more assets for that so we can keep having a wide variety of kind of cool ways that he moves in the world. So love that. Um, can I equip a full set? Yeah, you, so um, someone's asking about uh, that relationship between armor that boosts the skill and the, sk and the skills. Can I, like, for instance, get every item on my inventory boosting one skill? Oh, and the right. answer is no. We have a few uh, of those. What, what the th our philosophy on the item slots is, you know, gloves tend to have more of the damagey skill stuff on them, and the shoulder pads do too, and maybe the helmet. But the chest and, and hatch the, here, yeah. and the hatch sometimes does. But that the chest and the locomotion or the chest and the pants tend to do more health and toughness stuff. So we've kind of segregated out which of the affixes can go where. So it's, I don't believe you're going to be able, for instance, find a damage bonus for a skill on every slot. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of have that spread out some so that there's a little bit more distinct choices and organization to it. Now, one of the fun things to do with legendaries, though, the caveat to that is one of the fun things with legendaries is to break those rules and be <laughs> like, well, here's a chess piece that really helps rapid fire and lets it kind of go outside of those rules. So we'll, as we do legendaries and other things to kind of make more special items, it might be that you can do a lot more bringing things together. Dude, I got a resource shrine, and with the passive heat ventilation, I can just constantly punch things. I love oh. being this punch robot. It's so good. Oh, awesome. It's so fun. Some people are asking about kind of what's the style of the game as far as um, instance and open and all that. Um, the closest analogy we've got to how it works is uh, how Marvel Heroes worked in that there are towns that have tons of people in them. There are public areas outside of towns or along the way that have um, kind of random other people running around and playing, but it's smaller, not, not giant groups of them, but some that you're gonna run into. And then off of those, there's a lot of private instances for you and your party to play. So yeah. it is a place you're gonna run into other players fighting monsters. It's a place you can show stuff off at town, but it's also a game where you can go and find your own place to play and a place to fight monsters, fight on your own. So a question about Founders Packs and Starters Packs. Um, we haven't announced anything officially on that, but you know, once we get a little bit closer to launch, then we'll definitely be revealing more information right. about things that you guys can purchase, full yeah, swag yeah. and all that jazz. Yeah, we, we're not ready today to talk a lot about the commerce mm -hmm. stuff, um, but know that we're focused on it. We're trying to be part of the discussions. We have some ideas and solutions that we are really excited about for um, things that people can can get and how people can spend money or not spend money and still have a great time. Ooh. So They love giving me stats that. today. So yeah. Um, let's see. Will, all, will classes have space bar spells? Escape spell? Yes. So every class, I believe, has... Somebody's asking about being able to escape as a character class. Do, does each class have a way to get out of damage and out of trouble into another place? Every class, I believe, has that right now. Um, it's a v definitely required thing. In fact, um, ramming robot. I believe they have uh, the Forged, for instance, has a couple of them. He has Ramming mm -hmm. Robot, exactly, and Cyclone. Both are ways to get out of being surrounded. 
Um, yep. So that, that's what's coming along. And then Dust Mage has Luminous Run, which increases your movement speed and allows you to pass through enemies. Right. So if you're trapped or whatever, then you can use that. Exactly, exactly. So that is... Yeah, um, you can see me using Ramming Robot We had another lot. one for the Dust Mage that uh, was an experiment that didn't go well, and so oh. we still have more <laughs> work to do to try and probably get a Dust Mage another one. Um, but ideally, Dust Mage stays back anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Plans for achievements. Uh, we have not started working on achievements. Uh, uh, we probably will need to, but we haven't done anything for the achievements yet. There's plenty of opportunities for achievements, and especially given the horizontal content and the many places you can go and play the game, I think those achievements could be a really fun thing. Uh, and and honestly, we even have uh, the designer from Marvel Heroes who did all the achievements. Ivy is on our team. She loves achievement stuff. <laughs> Very nice. But we have we just haven't have done the work yet. Um, Somebody asked if we're launching in January this year. Uh, I don't think we're, we are not launching in January this year. No. <laughs> uh, we, right now the date is 2019. Um, so yeah. Uh, any other things? Cool, yeah, we have a little bit more time for questions, guys, so just get the last ones in. Uh, anything about particularly how horizontal progression works now or right. our new gear progression, frontier gear progression system, and right. also the wardrobe. Um, those are the, the main, major, like, meaty features yeah. that we've got in that we can show here. So I'll be sure to show the wardrobe off, too, right before we cut. So people are asking a little bit about item enchanting and crafting. We have a little bit of that in there, and that, you, for instance, you can um, craft the uh, relic weapons, and you can craft the fort decorations, but we don't have any other the items being crafted yet, craftable yet. Um, or, and then the other thing is uh, we don't really have enchantments going yet. Um, that's something we've talked about, but we haven't put any of the work or UI to make that work. Will the next alpha have Hyvid, um, map works for the Hyvid frontier? Yes, that I believe is in the plan. It, we have done a bunch of things to make map works uh, better um, and to it, it move that feature forward. And uh, without going into a lot of detail on that today, uh, the, yes, we will be able to map work. My goal is ideally that we have the full Hyvid frontier, as big as the goblin one, in the next um, alpha test. And so you'd have like two massive areas to play in with the wardrobes as a good way to be able to swap between them as you play. There was a question about zones resetting, whether you, after you leave them or not. Um, they're kind of persistent, I guess, is the way that you would describe it. Yeah, they right? stick Where around. The, yeah. the, em the enemies will respawn in the zone. So you can see I'm running around in the same zone, and I clear an area, and then the enemies come back. Yeah, we do have some tech for those private instances to reset the private instance, and when that happens, I wouldn't be surprised if we still have work to do there to make mm -hmm. that a great experience, but we uh, definitely uh, have this notion of like trying, like you went to town from your private instance, we got to keep that private instance around for a while, uh, but we don't keep it around forever because we don't, you know, we still have to pay for the servers, um, uh, but we do try to keep it where if you did a run and air into town or your fort and you get back, then you can come back to where you were yeah. <laughs> and get back to the thing. But if you go too long and grab a sandwich and take a nap, that, that place may be gone. Um, th but that is kind of common across all of uh, our style of games. I'm gonna check out this fort. This is an empty fort. That's oh, okay. Oh no! <laughs> this might be one of my alt accounts. Oh no! <laughs> uh, we have tried to do a better job of picking forts that have cool stuff in them, but that looks like it didn't work this time. We saw one earlier. Yeah, earlier yeah. we ran into a, a much more cool fort when we were visiting forts. Um, yeah, I have a lot of demo accounts set up right now, so it seems to be pulling from those. It's unfortunately, some from yeah. those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chad added his rad rating system that looks at how cool your fort is. It makes it more likely that your fort will show up for people if it's more rad. Um, and so uh, we're hoping to get that that will allow players to um, see more of the better, more decorated forts uh, as opposed to the ones where people just kind of have it as a pit stop for gameplay. Yep. So yeah. When is the game coming out? Uh, 2019 will be releasing right. on PC. And then, of course, uh, stay tuned for our next public test. That'll be in the next few months. We'll have something cool to share. We have another question on wardrobes. Let me try to answer that one real quick. Somebody's asking if I can have one item in multiple wardrobes. Um, no, these wardrobes work as specifically like storage. Like they, the item, you, you put it into the wardrobe and it's there. And then you can take it out and it's not there. It, there's no kind of virtual remembering kind of thing going on. It is very specifically like the item is in your wardrobe or it's not in your wardrobe. That kind of thing. I'm getting blasted uh, here. People ask, are the zones level. fixed or they, or they do they change every time? Our levels are random. Almost every level in the game is random. Uh, towns aren't random. The uh, boss fight arenas aren't random. Those little passageways that you see other people's forts in aren't random. But everything else in the game is a random level. 
Um, and that we love that. We love that's part of our heritage of how we've made these games, and it's part of what we love about um, Torchlight and Diablo and all the styles oh. that there's a different place you go to each time. All right, um, <laughs> I TP'd yeah, out. It's and, all right, we're good. And, that, uh, <laughs> and people ask again about the wardrobe. Part of the idea of the wardrobe is that it is a, a swap all the gear shortcut where you could just go to your fort, go hit that statue that's covered in your Hyvid stuff, and swap from Goblin to Hyvid, and then be back at playing another frontier with exactly what you want to have on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here, I will switch back real quick. Um, let's do this. Yeah, so and some, then we'll oh, another question again people are fast. asking about there's three icons for your levels in the different frontiers. And yes, that third icon is a frontier we have not announced or talked about yet. That's what it is. <laughs> Last yeah. question from Satori. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, uh, the, but then, I can't, I'm just not ready to talk about that. Again, <laughs> since frontiers and characters are some of the biggest things that we make, I like to make a big splash when we talk about. Um, talk about those places. Mm -hmm. uh, any other things? All right, cool, yeah, final questions. Final I'm just questions. gonna show the wardrobe again one more time okay. before we cut and then we'll kind of wrap it up here. Somebody's asking about damage numbers. Um, we've heard a lot of people talk about damage number stuff and I am sympathetic to kind of some of the desires and why there. Uh, we have not built the feature yet, but what I would like to add for damage numbers is actually kind of an in-fort experience of either hitting a target dummy or something that shows you damage numbers. And then I'd love to show you, to send to your machine, into your log file, the full damage calculation of how we got to that damage so that you can understand all the math of what's going on behind the scenes so that people who are really min-maxing in on all the, on all the, like, what is really better than what and how is this really working can get to all that nitty-gritty but it, that doesn't mean we have numbers flying around when you're out in combat yeah. to investigate. <laughs> um, so yeah, but that but that is what I'm hoping we can get to. It sounds like pro it's probably likely to be one of my future side projects. It's not one of those things I have to have to ship the game. But here we go. Hey, look, look, you can swap his whole gear between those two places. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Male and female too. Very progressive. You there can you swap go. on the fly. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that's the other thing to point out in the wardrobes <laughs> is you can change. The gender of it, so we didn't want to make it where you have to get a male statue or you got the female statue. You just have the statue, and you can decide what gender you want to show for that yeah. statue. It's a statue. It's like a fort decoration. It's a prop. It looks cool. Yeah, and make you it can how you want. Change its gender at will. So cool stuff, guys. That's a bunch of the changes we've made. We've got more of them to show and share in future streams. Mm -hmm. We're not done talking about everything we've done or are working on. Uh, some of those things are just aren't baked enough yet to really show off. Um, some of them we want to all present all together, um, and, but those things will come. Yep. Sweet. Okay. I think that just about wraps it up for us. Uh, thank you all so much for being here for our first stream of 2019. We had some really great stuff to show off. So on probably early next week, we'll have another blog post about the um, the wardrobe feature. Yeah. So you can get a lot of more like nitty gritty details in there. We're gonna have some cool screenshots. And if you want to read up more about our new frontier progression system, then we had a blog out earlier this week on Monday. Yeah. So be sure to check out our website, playtorchlight.com. You can see it there, and also on our arc page. Um, be sure to follow us on our social channels, uh, Play Torchlight on Twitter and Facebook. We also have discord.gg slash playtorchlight, so be sure to hang out there. I know Tyler and a lot of the other devs and myself and Ektra Hobbs, the new community manager yep. at Ektra. He's hanging out there all the time, too. You guys will get a chance to meet him on one of the streams here shortly. Yeah, join uh, the conversation. Listen We're listening. We showed, we showed you today a ton of different things that we listened to and made major changes in how this game feels and plays because of what we heard from you. So keep talking to us, and we'll keep listening. Yep. So again, uh, we're getting ready for another test, and it's going to be in the next few months, so stay tuned. Be sure to sign up if you haven't already, playtorchlight.com. You can enter in your ARC information there, and we'll be, like, we're will be we going to blast it out loud on all of our social channels, so you will definitely know when that's happening. Uh, one final closing thing is we are looking for community moderators for all of our official channels. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a link for the application form here. So if you would like to volunteer to become a community moderator, definitely hit that link that I just posted in chat. And we'll have that on the YouTube video and the VOD and everything too. So if you're watching this after the fact, then you can see it in there. Um, I think that about wraps it up. That's awesome. Any closing thoughts? Thanks so much, everybody, for being here. 2019 is going to be a fantastic year for us. Tons of exciting stuff that we've alluded to in the future. Be sure to tune in next stream. It's just going to keep getting yeah. progressively better. We can't better. wait till you guys are playing again, yeah. and, and we get more and more feedback from how things are going, and, and we can keep making this game better together. Right on. All right, cool. From both of us, thanks so much for stopping nice. by, and wave tour out. <laughs>